Today on Gun Talk Nation, we're talking with Dustin Wallace from Facts and Firearms. They're known for innovative products for shooters. They're known for really good barrels. And they're involved in the new 8.6 Blackout. Very cool new cartridge. Gun Talk Nation is brought to you by Franklin Armory, Arms Corps, Silencer Central, Silence Delivered, and Vortex Optics. Hey, welcome into Gun Talk Nation. Today on Gun Talk Nation, we've got, I was about to say Dusty Rhodes. We're Dusty Rhodes, the common Dusty, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin Wallace, Faxon Firearms. And Faxon, you guys, I think, are known to the gun world and to gun nerds. And then maybe the general gun populace, maybe not as known. So talk a little bit about Faxon and what you guys do. Yeah, so Facts and Firearms as a brand, we're actually coming up on our 10-year anniversary this summer. Uh, but the Facts and family, who still owns and operates Facts and Firearms, you know, they've been running businesses in greater Cincinnati, which is where we're based out of since the 70s. Uh, they've been in machining since 1978. Mm -hmm. uh, our original sister company, Facts and Machining, is still up and running, does a lot of work for Department of Defense and so on. Yeah, it's so. good. I mean, and I think that when you there's a few different types of categories of, of companies in our industry. Mm -hmm. And I think so one of them is companies that are run and founded by marketing type minded people. Right. And they do a really good job with the marketing. Typically, you have people you have companies who are founded by engineers or machinists. And sometimes as a marketing guy, mm -hmm. I feel like we're sometimes pulling teeth to get them to market yeah, yeah. to do marketing. But <laughs> Usually their products are really good, right? Because that's their bread and butter, and that's what the the founder cares about. So you guys come right. from a machinist background, yeah. Machining and engineering. You know, one of the one of our early you know taglines, if you will, was you know we have parts on the ocean floor, we have parts on Mars, and <laughs> uh, cool. there's um, you know with and then with firearms, it was more they wanted to have uh, you know their own brand. And they were both, uh, both Bob and Barry, the brothers who, who founded the company and are, are, you know, still own and operate it. You know, they wanted to be able to kind of take all those years of experience and in the machining world, apply kind of that lifelong passion of firearms and uh, put it together to make, you know, really unique items, um, innovative items and things that offer a high value proposition to the consumer. Well, I was saying earlier, you guys don't do boring stuff. Yeah, <laughs> you you do fun, inventive, different type mm -hmm. of stuff. Um, you do you certainly do OEM work, I think, right? Yes, we do a lot of OEM a lot of that. Mm -hmm. But also talking about the facts and branded products, a lot of aftermarket things. Where do the ideas come from? Because yeah. when you talk about aftermarket, typically aftermarket is not we're going to make a mag release button for Glock pistols that's the same as a Glock pistol. You're like trying to improve it, make it better, change it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it really starts with our first product, which was the ARAC 21. And so it's a ARAK hybrid, mm -hmm. kind of blending the the best of both worlds. It was the first patent kind of under the, the facts and firearms umbrella. And, you know, that was really, you know, something that came to fruition because when they knew they wanted to go into this business and they started researching it and going to the shows, they thought they were just going to be making ARs like everybody else. Uh, but then you see, it's, it's pretty saturated. There's there's a lot of people that do it and are doing it well. And even 10 years ago, it was that way. Uh, even before this whole pandemic gun run and everybody bought their own, you know, first five, five, six or whatever. And, you know, the story goes that, you know, Bob came home a little discouraged uh, and decided uh, to watch some Discovery Channel. Mm -hmm. Why not? Uh, mm -hmm. They were doing the top 10 battle rifles of all time. And it came down to the M16 and the AK-47. The AK-47 won out. He did not like that. Uh, <laughs> he wanted it to be an American product. Right. And so he decided to take, you know, the best features of both. And, and that night on three pieces of paper at his counter, uh, drew up the first draft of the ARAC 21. So it's been around for a bit and it's a piston gun. So it has this kind of best of both worlds of these of the AR and the AK. What do you guys hear from customers 
about the Iraq? What, what is it that they like about it? You know, I, I think it's just the, the uniqueness and the fact that you are kind of taking the best of both worlds for each and it's not just another AR. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's something that, listen, there's a ton of great companies that make great ARs, ARs and, we, and we make regular ARs too. Uh, but something that is unique that does take advantage of multi-caliber options, you know, and also has some of the features that had those weapons been developed today, probably would have had them, you know, like right. a non-reciprocating forward charging handle. Everything could be set up to be ambidextrous. You have a very easily adjustable gas piston system. And, uh, you know, being able to swap between 762 by 39 to 556. And then we also offer a 300 blackout conversion. And one of the main things that made it very popular at the beginning was it was just a complete upper. You know, everything recoil wise is all self contained in the upper. So you drop it on any mil spec AR 15 lower and you're ready to go. That's cool. So, yeah, you have some of that modularity, uh, some of the cool features, right, with the non reciprocating forward charging handle, ambi ejection, all that kind of jazz. Uh, but it is, it's just more, it's more of a unique gun. Uh, but it, you know, it also runs. You know, it's just a, a very solid shooting, unique, not just another AR, you know, on, on the market. So one of the things I've had a little experience with on Faxon is the aftermarket little bits and pieces. Yeah. And so I took a Glock 19 and Faxonized it, mm -hmm. put a Faxon barrel in it with a um, Faxon comp. Mm -hmm. And um, it's amazing how the aftermarket changes your experience as a shooter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I was, I, I, and I'd like to do this sometimes is I'll get a gun ready for filming a segment. Right. And I won't, do, I won't shoot it mm -hmm. before we film it. Sometimes that works out. Sometimes it doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, I did that with this particular gun and I just said, let's just film it. We'll talk about what a comp should be doing for me here mm -hmm. and we'll shoot it and we'll react. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this yeah. changes the gun. It yeah. makes me a better shooter mm -hmm. because there's no recoil to this. Right. Well, and that's, you know, like you were asking, like, where do the ideas come from? You know, a, a lot of these things that we do that are either unique to us or patents that we have are to solve some problems mm -hmm. for people. Right. And so even, for example, our integral muzzle device barrels. You know, you have the 16 inch minimum barrel length requirement, right. but you also want a permanently a fixed muzzle device. So we're like, we can make this all out of one piece of metal. And so we did. Very and cool. so you're able to get to your 16 inch minimum rifle barrel length requirement. Uh, but you know, you're not dealing with a pin and weld. Um, you, you know, obviously no crush washers, no shims, no nothing like that. Yeah. And it, it helps you, especially for like the lightweight crowd. They really like it. You know, same thing with our patented flame fluting, this sort of stuff, you know, all, all of it, uh, at the end of the day, it does look cool. Yeah, we'll you, you that. guys do a good we job do a good at job that. the aesthetic, but it has to, you know, meet a need first. And and so to talk about the comps, which were uh, an item we launched in 2021, and we're continuing to grow that line, you know, we wanted to be able to offer something to the consumer that they didn't have to do a lot of modification on their gun to be able to use it. You know, as you know, sometimes people have to be really picky about the ammo, changing out the recoil mm -hmm. spring, things of that variety. Um, we engineered it in a way that most of the time you could just put it on your factory factory gun. I'll say I appreciate that because I'm not a gunsmith. I, can, I don't play one on TV. I like to yeah. do little upgrade projects, but and I think there are a lot of people out there that that want to do those little projects that are like, okay, this is something I can do myself. Mm -hmm. And it's, I'm not going to have to make you know, like, you know, a home improvement. Like I'm not making five trips to Home Depot, right, you know, it's right. like, okay, I'm going to order the thing from fax and I'm going to put it on the gun and I'm going to have a good experience with it. Yeah. And that's the hope. And I mean, just like you said, the, the easy thing, the easy upgrade. And, and that's why I think uh, our pistol barrels are great. You know, they're drop in pistol barrels. Yeah. Um, you know, if you could take your gun apart to clean it, you could swap the barrel. Yeah. And so that's that's one of the we, kind of one of the things that we we start with when we talk to people about it. But because we do have the machining background and we have the OEM background, you know, one of our things with the pistol barrels is, you know, it's going to have better, tighter lockup than OEM. 
Um, we're making them 100% in-house, just like we do our rifle barrels. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people are like, who makes your blanks? I was like, we make our blanks. <laughs> uh, actually, you know, so they come to us as raw bar stock and, uh, and it come out the other end as a complete barrel. The only thing we send out for is coatings. Which is a perfect segue. When we come back, we're going to talk about the new barrels for the new cartridge, the 8.6 Blackout. Silencer Central delivers a silencer right to your door with a simple process that ensures you get the suppressor that you need. They make it easy they, from the online paperwork to help setting up your trust. And now with eForms, it's even faster. They have a variety of suppressors from the Banish 30 to the Ultima 9, even the Barrett 50 BMG suppressor. Check it out at silencercentral.com. Arms Corps Rock Island Armory. Their latest pistol is the STK100. It's a 9mm, and it's Rock Island Armory's first ever striker-fired pistol. A lot of their heritage comes from 1911s, and you can see that in the design of the STK100. A 1911 grip angle, extended beaver tail, but it has modern features like 17 round capacity. It's an aluminum frame, which makes it a really great shooting gun. It's optics ready, and they've just lowered the price to $4.99. Check it out at armscore.com. Springfield Armory, the new Hellcat Pro, combines performance, concealability, and capacity into one. This is a 9mm. It's 15 plus 1 capacity. It's a compact pistol, which makes it carrying more ammo into a smaller footprint than any other gun in its class. It's optics ready and it's equipped with accessory rail and hammer forged barrel. Springfield-Armory.com is where you go to see more. So the 8.6 Blackout. I love new cartridges and calibers. I'm a nerd for it. I yeah. love it. I, I grew up reading you know, the old gun digest Bibles and mm -hmm. looking at all the different cartridges and calibers and the different guns chambered in this and that. So let's talk about it. I mean, the eight, six blackout is brand new. What's the background on this one? So the round itself is actually developed by uh, Kevin Brittingham and the guys at QLLC. And so for those of you who aren't familiar, you know, Kevin and, and I think members of his team were the original guys on 300 Blackout. You guys know 300 Blackout, mm -hmm. 300 AAC. Mm -hmm. Kevin founded AAC mm -hmm. and very inventive. They're, they're a different crew up there. And yeah, I, yeah. I mean, look, sidebar, side story. <laughs> I went to meet with Kevin at AAC in Atlanta several years back. And I didn't really know what to expect. I mean, I've been to a lot of different gun company or, or industry company places. Their conference room looked like you were stepping into the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. <laughs> like literally, like it had these crazy windows uh, and uh, it was like the whole entire office, everything was black. Yeah. And it was like, what is this place? Yeah. And yeah. so he's a bit of a mad scientist genius guy. Right. right. Um, so 8.6... He, yes, they, they did the 300 blackout, and then they said, but we want something with more power, maybe perhaps more optimized for hunting, because mm -hmm. the 300 wasn't necessarily for that with its initial purpose. Right. Yeah, what they did was they took a... Uh Basically, the the blueprint of 300 blackout and made its big brother is the way that that we like to say it. It's kind of the first thing that helps people wrap their minds around the idea of what it is. Um, you know, so the the round itself is just a 338. Uh, it's a modified uh, 65 case and a 308 bolt face. And the main thing about it is the energy on target. So what right. they're trying to do is just kind of exploit the physics uh, to be able to offer more energy on target. And just like we've mentioned with 300 Blackout, and I'm sure you guys have talked about before, you know, it's, uh, you know, good for subs, you know, it's quieter, mm -hmm. the sound signature isn't quite as high. And the same thing transfers over to 86 Blackout. Uh, but for it to optimize uh, the round, it, the barrel needs to have a very fast twist rate. A very fast twist rate. Yeah. So... You guys know twist rate. How how fast are the lands and grooves spinning to spin the bullet? A one in seven twist, a one in twelve, depending on what the rifle is. Right. Um, so for every seven inches, we're getting one revolution of the bullet. Mm -hmm. But what's the twist rate for eight six that you guys are doing? One in three. One in three. One in three. So very fast. Yeah. Lots of spirals in there. Why? What does that do? 
So normally when you think of twist rate, you're thinking of uh, basically projectile stabilization. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of been ingrained in us. And then you always talk about overstabilizing and and I'm sure your comment section is going to blow up uh, with all this. Well, actually, <laughs> technically. Uh, but, uh, you know, you think of, uh, you know, people like, well, if you spin it too fast, you know, these things are going to blow apart or right. you're going to lose accuracy eventually. Uh, but the way that they're doing 8.6 blackout is with that twist rate, they are really able to impact impact energy on target. And so if you take a look at some of the ballistic gel testing that's out there and some of the photos even that Kevin posts when he goes hunting with this uh, with this particular round, um, your uh, primary cavity on these things look bananas. If you do a side-by-side -side of like the same exact round, you know, an actual 8.6 round, at a one and seven versus mm -hmm. a one and three, mm -hmm. it's like a night and day difference. It's amazing. Same exact round. So, because it is hard for us who we know all these things to be true. Mm -hmm. We know we know if you spin it too fast, that's bad. If you spin it too slow, it's that's bad. That's what we think we know. Yeah. Um, but now we're crease, increasing the RPMs of the bullet. Do, right. Do you know? Basically. I mean, what's the difference in the RPM here? And and do we? That I could not answer. That's that's uh, one of those things that yeah, and and some of it too is like you know we're the barrel manufacturers, so we like to let the ammo companies right. you speak for them. I yeah. understand. Like but, you were brought in because yeah, you make really good barrels. Yeah, yeah. But the the whole idea though is still you know maintaining accuracy for sure. Um, you know when we were at Shot Show, kind of the first time our barrels were unveiled in this thing, you know with supers you're ringing steel at a thousand yards out of like an eight inch barrel. So it's a three thirty eight. Um, what bullet weights are we talking like 200 250 uh i think we have like 160s and okay. um I, I can't remember the second one we could pull that up 180 something, something like that up. well yeah you know we'll, we'll look that up for you but and we'll post some links in this but um and that, that was part of it too is a 300 blackout is a great round and people go oh and you can shoot it subsonic the problem is 300 subsonic rounds are to quote a buddy of mine who shot thousands of pigs, <laughs> they're anemic. You don't shoot subs yeah. at critters if you want them to die quickly. Yeah. Um, it's like shooting a 45 ACP mm -hmm. at at an animal. Yeah, it, it it'll hurt them and they'll die or whatever. But um, so if our if our limitation on sub is that 1,100 feet per second, kind mm -hmm. of I understand depending on atmospheric conditions, all these things. Well, what if you could shoot a bigger bullet? Mm -hmm. Still maintaining subsonic i mean that's part of it that's part of it and also too uh again if you look at even some of the posts that were tagged in on instagram you know there's other companies that are working on it the big the big two for ammo right now is uh gorilla uh ammunition um they're doing subs and supers but you know i'd encourage you to take a look at discrete ballistics um who is also working on round for this and they are subsonic specialists. I mean, mm. that is like their bread and butter. And they make some amazing stuff for 300 Blackout as well, uh, as far as like different expanding uh, yep. rounds and everything. And, you know, just looking at, uh, you know, again, looking at some of these ballistic gel tests and so on, it's, it's pretty phenomenal what you could do even with subs. I mean, to be able to have, you know, terminal velocity out to like three or 400 yards out of a, you know, 12 inch barrel subsonic. Yeah. And uh, when you take a look, at some of the things that Q has posted. I mean, Kevin's down in Africa shooting Cape Buffalo with these things, you know? <laughs> so, and, and also you're, you're getting it in a shorter, you know, barrel profile. You know, right. this isn't like a, like a six millimeter arc or anything. That's a good point. You know? You're not, you guys are not doing long barrels to try to tease out more performance. Right. You're actually kind of doing the opposite. Yeah. The round is actually optimized for a 12 inch barrel. Um, Interesting. And, and so we are, you know, releasing eight, 12 and 16 inch barrels for this, uh, for both, uh, rimage style bolt guns and, uh, AR 10s. And yeah, those, those short barrels, you know, do just fine with it. I mean, that's typically, you know, what, what they're shooting when you see footage from us or Q or, or, or from gorilla, um, you know, not I mean, obviously we test the 16s and the 16s right. are great too, if that's something you want to do or you don't want to do the whole SBR thing. Right. Um, but as far as, you know, actual performance, 
you have a eight or a 12 inch barrel, it's going to be great for you. You're not really losing. It's designed for short barrels. You're not, mm -hmm. we don't, it's the opposite of what we've thought over the years of like, well, yeah. the, the shorter you get, you're going to keep losing performance. Yeah. Well, if it started out as being optimized for 12. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, and I mean, we have a eight inch in front of us and it looks kind of wild, you know, yeah. with the, you know, AR 10 build with this tiny little barrel, you know, up in front. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, if you're listening to this, you can tune into the YouTube channel and you can see this. Um, and when we come back, I want to talk more about the 8.6. Franklin Armory is your trusted source of binary trigger systems, quality firearms, and much more. Everything Franklin Armory manufactures is machined in America with American materials by patriots that will always stand for freedom, liberty, and the defense of the Second Amendment. Products like the new GS173 BFS3 kit for the Glock Model 17 Gen 3s, it includes the slide with optics cut and the trigger. Binary trigger for Glock pistols. Shop Freedom and Innovation at franklinarmory.com. Vortex Optics has a wide range of optics. And I think for a perfect day at the range, I typically will bring a lot of different things with me. So starting off, an optic like the Razer HD Gen 3 1 to 10 would be something, a low power variable optic, although low power, I don't know if we're going to call low power 10 power. You could put that on a bolt gun or an AR and do a whole lot of different things with it. And then, of course, they have their red dots. Red dots are great for a lot of different things. They have like a strike fire, which is more of like an AR red dot. But you could also get some of the smaller ones like the, uh, the Vortex Venom put that on your pistol and now you're a red dot ready to go. Of course they have binoculars, they have range finders, they have a whole lot more and you can find out all of this at vortexoptics.com. So I've got, and it, it's always interesting to me, I've got a 300 blackout and I've got an 8.6 black in my hand. And mm -hmm. when you talk about it just in theory, it's one thing, but when you see a cartridge compared to another cartridge, it really paints the picture. Yeah. It's, the 8.6 is not a necked up 300 blackout. Right. Absolutely not. Right. Um, so what about what about shooting it suppressed? I mean, how does that change things? Yeah, shooting it suppressed is actually one of the things that it was actually optimized for. It, you know, you a lot of people are going to want to shoot this suppressed. And also because, like we talked about with 300, you know, you have that noise signature. Mm -hmm. Um, it is amazing to shoot this suppressed. It is like a 22 and yeah. that is not even a joke. I yeah. think, uh, 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 some people from our team had gone out with gorilla and Q, uh, about a week ago. So some footage should be up shortly, uh, that actually, you know, they did the DB testing and everything and it's, uh, it's pretty spectacular. It's pretty spectacular what they're able to, I'm not going to speak for them. Uh, you will, we'll send that information off to you when it's officially published, but yeah, uh, to be able to shoot it suppressed is, you know, going to be a lot of fun for folks. So you guys are doing the barrels. This is button barreling. Yeah. So this is button rifling. This is one of the reasons Q came to us, um, because they wanted to be able to offer a button rifled mm -hmm. uh, barrel. And, uh, they've been, you know, we do a lot of OEM work we, you know, we, we joke that if every OEM, uh, told people that we make some of their stuff, everybody would know who fax it is. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, but Q has been, uh, incredibly generous in saying that, you know, we're making their barrels and everything. So when you buy a Q fix an eight, six blackout mm -hmm. or whatever, it's going to have a fax and barrel in it. And, uh, yeah, they wanted to be able to offer this in a button rifled, um, you know, option. The issue is not everybody has the machines or the know-how to be able to pull a one and three button. And, you know, if you think of, you know, a general one and eight or a mm -hmm. one and seven or even a one and five, you know, the, the smaller that second number gets, the tighter that, you know, the more that button has to do and you could burn up machines. I was going to say, I want to know button. what happens when an when it doesn't work, if like if you said, oh, some people can't do it, what's yeah, what's I mean, happening? Your machine could burn up. You could just go through tons of tooling 
mm-hmm. and never be able to pull the button all the way through. Um, it, there could be a lot of different things that that go on with it. Now, granted, there are other methods of rifling, you know, obviously like cut rifling and, mm-hmm. you know, there's some new technology that's using like electronic probes to do rifling. But to do a traditional, you know, button rifle on these, you've got to really be able to have the engineering know-how and and the right machines to do it. So when we were at SHOT Show and you guys were showing this off, we got to shoot it a little bit. We talked about different twist rates rates that have been played with here. Um, As far as, I think somebody said a one-to-one. Yeah. Which is, you guys played with that? You're currently playing with one one and one I mean, how did, where do we kind of, we play with different twist rates. I mean, where did it start? Where and how did we get to one and three as a, maybe the sweet spot? Yeah, that's a good question. I I think actually Q came to us at that one and three. They had already sort of done a little. Like the bar was going to you know pretty much be set for one and three. I I believe the you know one and twos and one and ones and all that sort of stuff might be a little more um, you know potentially for SOCOM, you know, okay. potentially for DOD type stuff. Um, but, you know, it is something that that we're playing with and and really just kind of seeing, you know, what's possible. Because when you think of twist rate again, round stabilization and so on, but, you know, with facts and barrels, we always try to make barrels that are going to uh, except pretty much any ammo that you throw into them, right. you know, even crummy reloads or, or whatever, uh, cast lead, you know, this is more of a specialty type thing, right? Uh, you know, it's, it's not even Sammy spec yet. You know, this is, it's still very, very forefront. Um, so, you know, that's, that's where this, this is going to be a little more special. And I also think to some of the questions that we're getting early on, it, you know, it's, it's as if we came out with a new AR-15 barrel. Right. And they're just like, oh, so what's special about this 5.56 barrel? It's like, right. no, this is like a totally different animal. You know, yeah. this, at least right now, this is not going to be your take it to the range and mag dump it type gun. You know, right. This is, yeah. You have, you do, there are two ammo companies loading for it currently. And I think this has some some chatter. There's a lot of people talking mm-hmm. about this one because it's interesting. And I wouldn't be surprised if more smaller ammo companies start loading for it. You're not, you're generally not going to see the big guys do anything yet until it really starts getting adopted more. Yeah. Um, well, and I think people are hungry for something different. You know, it's been nearly two and a half years of just total saturation of five, five, six, right. You know, everybody getting their first ARs or just their first guns in general, uh, since the pandemic. And, you know, as I look at it, um, you know, when I see what our customers are demanding, you know, based on in stock notifies order trends, uh, you know, search engine optimization tools, uh, people are not searching for five, five, six right now, like they were two years ago. Really? Um, you know, one of our top, uh, a lot of AR 10 right now, a lot of people searching for AR 10 on our website, uh, six millimeter arc is creeping back up the charts. Interesting. 300 blackout is creeping back up the charts. Seven, six, two by 39 for your AR creeping back up yeah. the charts. Uh, because it's been, you know, like I said, over, over two years of saturation of, of five, five, six. And so I think, even though I'm sure everybody would have loved to see 8.6 come to fruition two, three years ago, I think now is probably the right time for the market. I I think everybody is ready for something new, ready for something different. They're ready for their next build. And even at SHOT Show, I can't tell you how many times people are like, I have an AR ready. You know, yeah. I have an AR-10 ready to swap to for swap that. it over. Yeah, or I have a Remington 700 that you know I'm you know I'm ready to swap over for this. Very so cool. it's uh, I think it'll be it'll be unique. But again, thinking of it as uh, you know just like a regular 308 or or whatever, it's just I think like yes, it's a good spar- starting point just mm-hmm. to get you a frame of reference. But this is really a different beast. You yeah, know, this isn't your plinking gun or whatever. Maybe it will be eventually. But right now, this is uh, it's very very unique, very much for that hunting, like you were talking about. Um, and it's doing some incredible things out of short barrels and subsonic rounds. So somebody's hearing this. Can they buy the barrels now? Are they available? 
when does this air arrive? Yeah, <laughs> in a couple of weeks from now, you're yes. going to be getting and, pretty close. Yeah. You're going to be getting pretty close. Um, you know, things we actually have a, a weekly call with the guys at Q and Gorilla, mm-hmm. uh, and we're in regular contact with our friend Dave at Discreet Ballistics. And uh, you're going to be looking May June time frame. Okay, uh, we've so already started. Away. Yeah, we've already started accepting orders uh, from our dealer network. Okay, um, actually, if you search eight six blackout barrel, you're going to start seeing our product pages going up um our product pages are live too at factionfirearms.com okay, so, so they can see more mm-hmm. about the different barrels that are available yeah, and and, and some of the questions that that i can't answer or whatever you know we have a great landing page factsandfirearms.com slash 86 blk we have a bunch of data on there we have some load data from q tons of interviews that we've done that q's done um a bunch of different stuff. So if you really want to get into the nitty gritty, you could spend a day on that page. Yeah. If you want to geek out, yeah. this, this is one of those things that like, oh, I want to see um, inside the barrel. I want to yep. compare the twist rates and go, oh man, look at that. Yeah. Cause a lot of people, one in three is pretty uncommon. Yeah. And most people haven't seen what that looks like to really yeah. compare it to maybe a standard one and seven, one and eight, whatever it might be. Yeah. And the, and the Borescope video does a good job of illustrating that, you know, we, we had a lot of people at SHOT Show that would come take the barrel off the, off the rack and just look up through look it. Through the and, barrel. You know, and when you're just looking through it, I mean, it just looks like, you know, like a threaded port for a screw. Right. Uh, I mean, it just looks threaded more than anything else. Right. It is very crazy to see. Uh, but yeah, we do run a, we have a little Borescope GIF going on the website that you could uh, take a look at to compare to a one and eight. And you have gel tests as well. Gel tests. Yep. Uh, compliments of discrete ballistics. There's going to be some more uh, that were filmed just about a week ago. Okay. Uh, that'll be published here soon. Uh, that were uh, done during a hog hunt. So some cool. of our staff members and Gorilla and Q staff members went on a hog hunt using these things, uh, including this gun that's in front of us right now. And uh, it's it's pretty wild. It's yeah. pretty great. It's fun to go do those ballistic testings in, yeah. against the hogs. Right. Yeah. Shoot <laughs> some jail, shoot some hogs. You yeah. Know, make See your what way back really happens. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it. people go, oh, you guys are goofing around. No, it really is testing. Yeah. Right. I mean. Yeah. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah. You know, and, and there's also like little knickknacky things that, you know, maybe the general consumer wouldn't think about, like what's going to be coming to that you could buy uh, when our barrels come out where we actually have raised height uh, gas blocks. These are going okay. to be, you know, 875 uh, gas blocks. But how many times do you run an eight inch barrel out of an AR-10 build? And so your gas tube if you put it on a regular gas block is going to be oh, like all crunched down. Yeah. So we even have like a little raised gas block that you could get for all these builds and so on, because the eight and the 12 are both uh pistol length. Whereas the 16 is going to be carbine. Uh, yeah. Carbine length. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. There's going to be those other things um, that you're going to have to put on there. What about muzzle devices? So we are going to have our own muzzle device, um, the one of our muzzlock muzzle devices. So if you're not familiar with muzzlock, it was a, a proprietary thing that we came up with a few years ago that uh, you can time your muzzle device in the field, no shims, no crush washers, okay. easy to remove for cleaning, or if you want to shoot suppressed or unsuppressed, perfect for 8.6. Um, so we have a uh, just one of our three port breaks is going to be the first one that comes out for us. Uh, but on the builds right now um, that you'll see is we have, um, you know, muzzle devices for suppressors. Right. So we have the Cherry Bomb uh, from Q. Thunder Beast has theirs. So, uh, but the, the Cherry Bomb is probably going to be the one that people see the most. Sure. Um, but if you buy a complete 8.6 rifle from Faxon, it's going to have one of our muzzle devices on it. But the nice thing is you could still unthread it and yeah. put a suppressor on there. Complete. Yes. Rifles. You said that. Yes, I did say that. <laughs> Those will be coming a little later. The The barrels are going to come first. Um, yeah. We are going to have our own uh, rifles and we are also going to have our own bolt guns. So this will be Ooh. a Ooh. new one for us. Ooh. Yeah. We've, you know, we make bolt stuff OEM. But yeah. as far as like fax and branded bolt, um, I think the last time we did it was like RPR. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, so this this is fun to have another, you know, fax and branded item for something that's, uh, you know, different than just the the Black Rifle AR market. Not that there's anything wrong with it. We love it. We're in it. You know, we're in it for life. But, you know, to be able to continue to increase the brand 
just like we did with adding more pistol barrels. You know, last year we added a lot of stuff for subcompact, you know, yeah. adding magazine extensions, adding the Exos comps, like you mentioned. Uh, this is just another way to, you know, take take the facts and DNA of, of quality, of uh, the fellowship of firearms to make things that are good enough to pass down to your kids yep. and increasing that across the spectrum. I love it. I love it. Well, uh, check it out, faxandfirearms.com. Yep. Yep. Thanks for being with us, man. Totally my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Very fun. Always fun to talk about new things. That's it for us. We'll see you next time on Gun Talk Nation. 